All right, so I'm going to start with the head very close to the right side of the paper. I'm just going to give myself a little line so that I know how much space I'll have between the edge of the paper and the head. That's going to be kind of this part right here. Absolutely, you can show artwork during sharing time from this class or any other class or any drawing that you've done by yourself. I'm just using straight lines for right now to block out the angles of the head. Sometimes when we do a curve, all the curves end up looking the same. So by doing these lines, I can take a look at how this line is a little bit longer and this one's a little bit shorter. Just like this part of the curve is a little bit longer and this one's a little bit shorter. And we're going to dip down just a little bit. That'll be the end of the head. Did anybody draw last week when there was no class because I was taking tests at school? <laughs> Look like maybe Fusi raised her hand, but that's okay if you didn't. If you wanted a week off, that's fine too. Then for the, were you gonna say something, Fussy? Oh uh, yeah. So I just found a snail in my grandma's garden. A snail? Today. Ooh. Yeah. Today, just today. It wasn't just eating today? my plant. It wasn't eating my plant. It wasn't eating my plant. Well, that's good. I have a plant. So, what kind of plant? Uh, we planted a lima bean. Ooh, yum yum. So you can see this bison's back, this buffalo's back has a short line that goes up to the top of the shoulder there and then comes back down. We're going to ignore the tail for right now and just draw the end of the body. Just this line right here. We're going to ignore the legs. And start sketching the belly. And then back over on the head, you can see this diagonal line. Not going straight up and down, leaning to the left. Or I guess leaning to the right, depending on if you're looking at it that way or that way. We're going to have that diagonal line as this buffalo's nose is pointed back to the body. A little bump for the nose itself. And there's some hair that looks a little bit like a beard coming off the chin. So I'm just going to put kind of a triangle shape for right now. I'm not worried about the individual hairs. I just want to make sure this all connects up into one big shape. And this would be the time to pause and take a look. See if your head looks too big, too small. Does your body look maybe too long in comparison? Just like when you look at those um, like activities where you have a picture and then a picture that looks very similar, but you're trying to spot the differences. 
that's where you go back and forth look at the differences what do i see different what do i need to change to make it look more the same welcome ka oh i think ka disappeared unless that was like ka initials it was me so i i changed my name oh okay i got it Now let's add some legs. We've been doing this in the magical horse classes a lot where we have this little point. There's a little bony joint that's in the back leg there. So we're gonna make that little angle, almost like a question mark by curving it first and then going straight down. In fact, let's zoom in so we can see this better. little curve and then straight. I'm going to keep going straight. And just like we've learned in magical horses class, the hooves don't go straight down. They go a little bit diagonal. And we're going to come back up. And use another diagonal line to go right back into the body. And just take a look at how this line in front is short. And this one is long. If you have them the same size, then you need to change this diagonal one. Because if it's too flat, these two lines will get to be the same. But if you make it a little more tilted, then you'll have some uneven lines. Uneven lines are great. Especially when we're doing things that are living. If you're doing a house, uneven lines, maybe not so great because then you got a wobbly house. But when we're doing animals, lots of times there's uneven lines. Hi there, Stephanie. Hi, Betsy. We're doing, I'm going to zoom out and see so you can see what we're doing here. Oh. Doing an American bison there, buffalo. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I'm on my phone so you can mute me with my bad babies in the background. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. No problem. So we've got one foot that's close to us. We're going to draw this other back foot that's a little farther away. And it's a little hard to see, but this one is lower on the paper and this one is higher on I'm the paper. Always, I'm always using my iPad for art class. Oh, you are? That's good. Who said I don't know? IDK means I don't know. That's true. It does mean I don't know. So for this one, let's go ahead and start up at the top and kind of mimic, make that similar line going diagonally from the body. And bring it back down and make it shorter, higher on the paper than this one. Not super short, not like it has one leg that didn't grow, just a little bit higher on the paper so that we can see it's farther back in space. You may notice when you draw a house with mountains, the mountains are usually higher on the paper because the mountains are farther away. Same idea here. On the back side of the leg, we're going to do the same thing, that curve, little point, just 
just like we do in magical horses class that little point there coming down little notch for the hoof and i'm going to pause right there so that you can double check are the legs about the same size do you have one that's really chubby and one that's really skinny is one higher than the other is one flat on the bottom bad betsy and one curved we got to come back and fix those little things before we go to ink ink is so much harder to change than pencil betsy can i see the head please absolutely we blocked it out like that so far but you can do all the bumps and lumps of the <laughs> final one if you want right well Next, we're going to add the tail. So right off the back end here, I'm going to start with a little loop. Buffaloes have kind of the same tail as a lion, just not as long, but there's the part that has short hair on it. And then at the very end, there's long hair like a tassel. Swap those flies. And you can make the hair on that tail go any which way you want. Just remember when we're drawing hair, we like to have big curve and little curve. Make the curves even, it just ends up looking like spaghetti. To make it look more like hair, I've got big curve and a little curve. On this side too, big curve and a little curve. You might also notice advanced students that the rounder curved tail looks a little friendlier and this one where I use straight lines looks a little more solid a little more blocky and strong it's subtle but if you want your bison to be a little stronger looking you can use more straight lines to make it blocky and solid Next, we're going to work on the front legs. So I'm going to take a look at actually this shape right here in the white. We've got this long, short, and then long again. So here we have the short, or, the, or excuse me, one of the long. So I'm just going to add a short and then another long line. So this is going to be one shape I can try adjusting my camera focus but I only have one button that's automatic so if it's still blurry after that 
I'm sorry, but I have no other way to make it clear. And this leg is close to us, as close as this one. So that means the hoof is going to be on the same level on the paper. By level, I mean how high or how low. It's going to be on the same level as that back hoof. Little rounded on the bottom. music at my house. Oh, well, you can enjoy your music while you draw. Unfortunately, if it gets on the recording, YouTube will take our video down. So <laughs> you can't have you sharing your music that way. Bison have lots of thick fur on their front legs that isn't on their back legs so much. So in the back here, we're going to just have a little bumpy line just for right now to show that this is going to be all kinds of fur. We don't have to worry about it too much yet because we don't know how much is going to get covered up by that other leg. So no point in making it perfect if we just have to erase it later, right? So let's just kind of put in a little sketch. Give us the idea. Going to be a lot of fur on the back there. What is the poofiest animal I see up appearing in the chat? I don't know. Could be a poodle, maybe a sheep. Angora. English, or, oh, English Angora. Or a <laughs> there you go. We've seen how much poof comes off Angora <laughs> rabbits. Uh huh. Can't see their eyes, can't see their nose. <laughs> <laughs> Poofy. Poofy. I'm going to shoot you. Pew pew with love bullets. Pew 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 pew. For this other leg, as our bison's taking a step, we're going to have that hoof coming to the back diagonal line. It's going to be right here. Ignore these little bumps for right now. We just know it's going diagonally back. There's the bottom of the hoof. Looks like a check mark so far. And then a little notch. That's those little notches I've been putting in each one. And then again, we're gonna have lots of hair coming off the back. So I'm just gonna make some little shapes. Try to make them all different, some skinny, some chubbier, some short, some long. And erase from the front leg. So now you know exactly how much that you need to draw on the front leg here. So I'm going to pause there so you can work on your legs a little bit more before we move on. Again, take a look. Does one look really thick and one look really skinny? Keep the one you like the best and then change the one that you don't like as much. Another question in the chat. When we finish this year, we will have no more drawing, question mark? Are you talking about classes? We go in the summertime, don't we? Yeah, usually we take the winter break 
from December until January is our typical end of the year break. I have a fan right next to me. Ooh, gonna keep I'm... yourself cool, huh? It's getting warmer. Yeah. Summer's coming. Yeah, I just want... yeah, I just wanted to keep myself cool. That's a good idea. I'm hoping that with these longer sunny days, I won't have to take out my big light and we can just have it lit by the sun. Oh, there's Mickey. Let's let her in. Uh, I, I, I never go to the pool before, but we only went to the beach three times. Hi, Hi Mickey. 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 If you're done with the legs, you can also come back here to this point we had for the beard kind of hair hanging off his chinny chin chin. I'm just trying to make each piece different. Some long, some not so long, some skinny, some not skinny. And you can see there's a couple more spots where I've added just little pieces of hair flying off. So you can add those by yourself. And they don't have to look exactly like mine. We just want there to be some indication that this is big and fluffy. I usually do them around the corners or anytime my lines change direction. You can see that's where I'm usually sticking these little tufts of hair. And normally we don't draw anything on the inside of our silhouette, but today we've got this one horn that we're going to go ahead and add on the inside. Just somewhere kind of in the general head area. A little bit closer to the top. And I added this teeny tiny overlapping line so that I can tell one part of the horn is closer to me and it's covering that other part of the horn. It looks like a thumbs up. This kind of look like a thumbs up. If we add the little lines. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pause here just one more minute because after this, we're going to ink. We're going to ink our outline. So make sure you like your outline. Check if there's any parts where you go, eh, I don't like how that's shaped. Change it now. Your last chance. Betsy? Mm -hmm. I have a non-related buffalo question. Okay. Um, I want this dragon to look like it's swimming underwater. Okay. There's going to be light coming through the water. Now I tried putting a color around it, mm -hmm. but now 
like it's swimming in the sky. So is there a way to make it look like water? Absolutely. It's a little bit, you got, you got to have some courage. You're going to take your water blue and go right over the top of your dragon. Like here? Yeah. Cause right now you've gone around it. Just like the sky kind of is around, uh -huh. but when we're in water, we're submerged. The water. So like you, yep. You would okay. actually take the watercolor and go right over the top of your dragon. If that, okay. if that, yeah, if that's too scary, the other no. thing you can do is, depending on if this is a lake or the ocean, you get some seaweed or some oh, fish or seaweed. something yeah. that indicates to people that this is underwater. Or you can make it with bubbles and make the sea dark. Yeah. That's it's another good idea. I couldn't get it going, but I'll try to be brave. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. You're very welcome. All right, are we ready to ink? I happen to have one of those kneading stretchy erasers, so I'm going to lighten up my pencils a little bit before I put on the ink, just because I'm sure you guys have seen how pencil can be shiny when you wiggle it around in the light sometimes, so that kind of repels the ink. The ink can't stick to the paper with all this slick, shiny, greasy pencil on it. So I try to get rid of most of it and just have a light outline. And then I can take my pen of choice. You can get a felt tip marker. You can get a felt tip writing pen. You can get a fine tip Sharpie. And we're going to go around this Buffalo outline. My tip for doing this is always pick up your pen a lot. Don't try to do the whole thing in one go. Typically it's these tiny pointy parts that make your drawing look the best. And if you go too fast or you try to ink too much at once, those little points get rounded and they don't look like fur anymore. It doesn't look like a hoof anymore. It looks bulbous like a balloon animal. So I'm going to lift up my pen a lot, each little line. One at a time. Remember, you can spin your paper to make it easier to get some of these lines. Sometimes a line is in an awkward direction. So just spin it until it's in a comfortable position. A friend of mine gave me this handy dandy tool. I like it. Ooh, what tool is that? Ooh, it looks like a pen of some kind. T-U with an umlaut over an L. Oh. Friend being Kristen. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to go as fast as I'm going. I just want to have it done so you can see what it looks like. Whoops, the tip of my pen is split. You know how sometimes you want to put on the cap and it bumps right into the tip? Uh -oh. Looks like I did that to this one. So I got to rotate it around. Doesn't hit that split side. After you've inked it all the way around, you got to wait for it to dry. Make sure it's dry. You don't want it to smear when you come back to erase all these pencil lines. Sometimes I leave it and erase at the very, very end because I'm too afraid it's going to smear. I 
I also somehow got some little ink dots on my paper. Don't know how that happened, but that's okay. I'll turn that one into the signature. That one's gonna be a tree. I still have options for those little boo-boos. And you can see on the finished buffalo, the lower half is going to be all filled in black. So if you get to this point and you go like, eh, I don't really like that leg. It's too skinny. I wish I had made it thicker. You can actually come back with your pen and just make it thicker. It's going to be all black anyway. So anything kind of on the lower half of your buffalo, if you want to add more ink, you can do that. Nobody will know. <laughs> In fact, I think that's what we'll do next. We'll make these big curving lines that separate the pure black from the not pure black. You can do it in pencil first if you want to be able to erase any mistakes or you can go right for it with pen. I'm going to go ahead and start with pencil first. And I'm just going to make a nice curve of the ground that goes from the buffalo's head kind of down to that leg and from the buffalo's hind quarters down to that same point. It's going to be two little hills that our mountain lion is going to be jumping across. And I'm also going to plot out where I want those pointy mountains to be. There's this great big one that frames our mountain line. So that one's going to go almost in the center. I want to kind of avoid having the top of the mountain exactly above the little point of my valley. I want them offset so that it's not- Kind of too light. Too light? Kind of Thank you, Fusi. I will darken up the lines. So you can see how this point and this point, they're not exactly on the same line. They're a little bit pushed away from one another. Not a big deal if they are right above one another, but I think it looks a little better when they're offset, a little more natural. And we've got this other little mountain that goes right into the horn and keeps on going on the other side of the horn. Another mountain over here. I'm gonna to try to not make it the same size as the mountains I've already drawn. And if you have room, you can even stick in the beginning of a fourth little mountain when you get to the tail. Then we're going to work on that mountain lion. Zoom in a little closer here. <coughs> First thing we're going to draw is just the body. If I ignore the head, ignore the legs, ignore the tail, this is kind of that long bean shape. And I'm going to draw it very close to my mountains kind of an elongated bean or elongated oval. Jelly bean. Kind of like a jelly bean, right? I want it a little bit close to the mountain so that I don't have really long legs on my mountain lion. You 
You can check really quick if it's too long of a leg by just putting two little lines going back this way. other leg you can see there's this little white triangle in between the two legs so sometimes I think it's easier just to make that little triangle instead of trying to figure out the leg let's make that little triangle and then add the line in the back and don't forget back legs just like the buffalo has that little point that little bony area this part right here You might not be able to see it depending on high, how, how high your mountain is, but it will be there. The front leg, I'm gonna make it go right from inside this jelly bean down to the other mountain. If that makes the leg too long on your drawing, you can just draw the end of the paw. And on the back, I'm gonna give this little tuft of fur, little point, and then bring it forward. And again, you might see a tiny, tiny little triangle. Let's zoom in even closer. Check out that tiny, tiny little triangle after it focuses. Teeny tiny in between these two front legs. So I'm just going to try to draw that same teeny tiny triangle. That'll help me position the other leg. Wait on me. That sounded like a request to wait, so I'm going to wait right there for 30 seconds. Now I'll also back up a bit in case you need to see both sets of legs. And next, let's add the tail. A little bit straight as it goes backwards, keeping this cat's balance and then tips up at the very end. I found out that most of the drawings that we use for inspiration are by this Brazilian artist, Thiago Bianchini, if I'm pronouncing that somewhat accurately. And he takes a portion of the profits that he makes off of all of his artwork and he donates it to preserving wildlife and saving stray kitties. So I thought that was very nice of this artist to do that. And now the head. <gasps> First, we're going to do one of our favorite shapes, the raindrop. So I'm just gonna make a little raindrop where it's a little pointier on one side, a little rounder on the other side. And you can see it's overlapping the body. I'm not leaving any room for a neck. It's not detached at all. It's actually quite close to the body. You can erase it out to see how it's looking. Almost think like you're making a mouse head. 
All right, I mean, that could almost pass for a squirrel. It could pass for a mouse. It's so, so tiny that sometimes they'll look a little bit similar. And it's easier to draw when they look similar. I'm gonna add an ear in the back. Maybe a little farther back, that's a little too much like a mouse. If your mountain lion is touching the lines of your mountains, you can always move them. And the last little addition I'm gonna make is a little bit stronger chin. If you really wanna drive the point home, you can also add a couple of whiskers sticking out. <laughs> I'm gonna to try to keep mine a little blocky and zoom out. All right, we've got about 15 minutes left. We can do it. The black areas, I know you can do that on your own. So let's try out some of these areas that don't just have straight black and white. Let's start with like the mountain here. On each of my mountains, I'm going to draw a little zigzaggy line. Doesn't really matter how you do it, but we're just gonna split the mountain in two we do want kind of a skinny side and then a big white side. Do that to this mountain too, to zigzag. This one over here is only gonna have a tiny zigzag because this mountain overlaps it. So it'll only go part way down. I'll get one of my skinnier tipped pens and fill in one side with diagonal lines that match the contour line. They match that diagonal. So I'm just going to keep on filling it up to the line, scritching and scratching, filling it up in the line. I'm going to zoom in for a moment so you can see it up close. This one is going this way, so I'm going to keep making lines on the inside. If they bump into one another, that's okay. This one too, it's a great big line. You can go right through your mountain line because that will be black anyway. So it doesn't really matter if these lines go through the tail. Just going back and forth, back and forth. Giving it some texture. Then I'll come back with the little bit thicker pen that I use for the outline of my bison and I'll ink that line, that dividing line. Go right through my mountain line, that's okay. I'll go ahead and ink the other side of the mountain too. Remember to spin your paper to where it's the most comfortable. That'll get you the best line.
And then let's take maybe two minutes to try to fill in as much black as we can. And then we'll draw some trees together. What about the eyeball? I thought I saw an eyeball. Nope, no eyeball on this one. We're just going to have that one horn. Oh, that's, that's the mountain. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to spin that paper. You can put a little shoulder angle on your mountain lion if you like. Instead of having it a smooth joey bean. Don't be afraid to color beyond the legs. Remember that mountain is going to be all black too. So I can just color right into the mountain. My mountain is going to extend into the tail too. So this part of the tail is going to be black all the way down. My, my, uh, my black almost have no water. Almost. Almost, almost no ink? Yeah, almost no ink. Oh dear, we'll get as much out of it as you can. Tell it, it's all okay. All right, two minutes is up. Even if you didn't get to draw in very much black, that's okay. We're just going to take a look at how we do the trees. We've done trees like these before, so you might remember how to do them, but if you don't, that's okay. I'm gonna do them right now. So first I'm gonna decide how tall my trees are by drawing a line for the trunk. So you can see I've got a tall tree here and a little bit shorter one here. So I'll make a long line and then a little bit shorter line. Maybe I want a tree over here and a tree over here. Maybe I want a tree over here. You can just pick the spots where you want your trees to be. Try to make them different heights. And then we're just going to sketch at a diagonal and make these lines get longer and longer as they get down to the ground. So I'm gonna start very short, 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 so short, and then we'll get a little longer a little longer, a little longer, 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 longer until it bumps right into the mountain. There's one side. On the other side, short, short, short. A little bit medium, longer, 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 longer until it gets down to the ground. If your treetop is too pointed, that's okay. You can just add a little bit more at the top. Get that point back. Make it look more like a pine tree. And we're going to do that to each and every one, getting longer, longer, longer as we go down to the ground. Okay. 
They don't have to be solid black. In fact, we kind of like it a little better when there's a little bit of white peeking out from between the branches. You can start from the bottom and go up and get smaller, 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 if that makes more sense. And you can pick if you have a really dense forest with lots of trees or if you have a little bit sparser forest with more ground visible. And then if you want to, there's another little mountain tucked behind these other mountains that's not filled in black. It has the stippling texture. I'm gonna grab a pen and show you how to do that. Whoops, I gotta get on camera. Let's say I make a little mountain back here. I don't wanna color it in black because then we'll just merge in with my other big mountains. So I make all kinds of dots, dot, 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 dot. After my, I fill it all in, oh, go ahead. My line is so big that might look like a pile of poop. Uh oh, well then don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> I like the background behind the lion, but, or, you know, in that big mm -hmm. white base, but I, I'm not sure. I made my lion too big, I think. It's just closer to the viewer. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Now my black is out of ink. Oh, no, totally out of ink. You're going to need another pen. Oh, yeah, I'm going to have to go find one first. OK, go for it. So I'm just adding more and more and more and more and more dots to the top of this little mountain. Maybe put a little tree on top. Some little baby saplings starting to grow, or maybe they're just so far away that they're tiny. And then if you want it to be a night scene, you'll be coloring in the top portion all in black with some stars and a moon. I know you guys can do that on your own. Or if you want it a daytime scene, let me show you how to do that. We'll just add the sun and maybe some clouds. So I'll just put 
a circle right here. If you don't trust yourself to be able to draw a circle, you can always find something to trace or get a stencil. Nobody will know. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's <laughs> fine. It's fine to use your tools. And then I'm going to draw a little cloud. I like to draw clouds a little flatter on the bottom and poofier on the top. and sprinkle some around. The bigger they are, usually the higher they are, and the smaller they are, usually the lower they are. So if I have a tiny cloud over here, a little skinny one, a bit lower. And don't forget to sign your work. Do we have to put that by whatever? Because mine doesn't look anything like his. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's up to you. Okay. You can put it or not put it after a whole semester of art history, even back in the day of Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, Raphael, they were all copying off each other. They were all <laughs> taking influence off each other and they weren't putting Michelangelo after so-and-so. <laughs> Sometimes I just like to make a note of it in case I want to look this artist up again. Yeah, that's a good idea. But you can always put that on the back instead of on the front. <laughs> Yago Pianchini. Now, how do you spell that? Make it, make it a little big. A little bigger, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tiago. So, so I cannot even find a black marker. Oh no. Oh no. If you ever get another black marker, you can fill it in. Watch this video and you can fill it in again. So that's about all the time we have. Let's share. I'm going to remove my spotlight and anybody who's ready. Actually, I'm not done. You're not done. Huh. I know. I think a lot of us aren't done. <laughs> that is okay. Yeah, my ground. The ground is not done for mine. Looks okay. like Callista's ready to share. Let's oh, spotlight for everyone. Oh, Woo! excellent. That's going to be so awesome when you fill in the black. Look how you filled that page. Brilliant. I uh, love it. I think yours will be a night scene because I see the moon. Mm -hmm. Let's see your mom's. Ooh, ah. get there. <laughs> I like that outline. Good luck with the cat. <laughs> yep, good luck with that mountain lion there and all those trees and doodads on the inside. Of course, you don't have to put a cat. No, you don't have to. Looks like Stephanie's ready. Let me spotlight for everyone. Stephanie B. The lead, yeah. Ooh, oh, look at that. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. I should have done it like the kids. <laughs> yeah. Wish Buffalo, man. <laughs> That's what happens when you come late. That, that mountain lion looks good, though. That came yeah. out real nice. Let's see Kristen's. Always place the spotlight. Ooh. Ooh. There is a mountain lion. Nice. Nice. That's so he just fun. hasn't got done yet. He just hasn't know. got done yet. Nice. Oh. Do you know if you're going to make it a night scene or a day scene? No, I don't because I have these trees sticking up into the sky. Mm -hmm. And that makes Mine me think it's that too. probably yeah. going to be daytime. <laughs> yeah, you can do daytime or if your trees stick up like mine did in the head here. I just left kind of a little bit of white. Oh, kind of indicate the branches, but pretty much filled it in. Oh, looks like we got another one ready to share. I can't remember if this was Tracy's or Natalie's, but there you go. It looks good. Oh. Whoa. That cat yeah, has look at that a lion. lion. Yeah, the lion is really good. Awesome. Yeah, yes. really good. See, now, you didn't turn your sideways either to get a bigger buffalo on the same Let me see. piece of paper. Oh, here's one. Turn sideways. Natalie. 
And you didn't fill the page, Natalie. Wow. That's very good. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. I don't know how you can draw that small and get all those details in. Let's take a look at Oh, scenes. wow. Here's somebody who filled the oh, page. Wow. 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 made it. There. Are you going to nice. make some more black in there, Fusi, at the bottom? That's a yes. That's a yes. <laughs> <Who's> <laughs> Somebody else that? said yes. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't Fusi's thumb. We have a visitor. Let's see. Anybody else? Mickey, anything you want to share? No, sorry. No worries. That's everybody then. I thought I heard something about somebody wanted to show a unicorn drawing, though. Yeah. Who was that? Was that Natalie? Tracy? We had dragons being shown. We might as well show a unicorn. Yeah, show unicorn. me what you got. Me. Okay, me. Show it. <laughs> if not, we can do it at the beginning of the next class when we. Oh, here we go. Oh, these are our buffaloes from. Uh, from the water. Well, here's oh, the, here's the nice unicorn. The unicorn was great. More buffaloes. I want to see my plant. So you guys had more practice with uh, buffaloes than I realized. Hey, we're practically experts. Who wants to see? <laughs> <laughs> practically. Tristan, and I do. I have a plant. <laughs> Who wants to see Pussy's plant? Hey, you. There you got Pussy. Hold yeah. it up. Uh, I don't have it next to me, but I have it in the garden. Well, we want to see your drawings, Susie, not your garden. You have to go draw a picture of it. Bring that back. Absolutely. And let's see that unicorn one more time. I only got to see it yeah, for a short bit. That was good. Just one more time. Where's the unicorn? Me. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe at the beginning of next class then. Okay. Well, I will see some of you in the Secret Lives of Cats coming up next. See some of you next week. I'll see you next week, Betsy. All right. Sounds good. Thank Bye. you. You're welcome. Bye.